Welcome. You know, for a long time, I've wondered about vitamin B12. How much do we need? What kind should I buy? Being whole food plant-based, it's important that we have it. At least we're told that. And so I like to make sure that we have all the boxes checked to have amazing health. And we just heard a video from Dr. McDougall that made it really, really clear to me. I'm taking more than I need now for sure. I'm gonna cut back on that because I'm not a great believer in supplements. When you eat whole food plant-based, you get the nutrients the body can utilize in a way that's amazing. Yeah, you often are able to utilize the nutrients in the whole food actually much more effectively than when they take that so-called active ingredient out like vitamin C out of the orange and then you take a pill for vitamin C. Your body doesn't absorb nearly as much of the vitamin C that's in your blood, that's in your mouth, in your stomach from the pill as it does from the vitamin C that's in the orange because there's all these what they call cofactors. There's these other elements in the food that help the body to absorb it and utilize it. It's magic what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so have a look and listen to Dr. McDougall. It's a short clip, but I think it'll make vitamin B12 for those of us who are whole food plant-based very clear. Oh, the B12 issue is uh, a really important one. I'm Dr. John McDougall. I always get asked this question about B12. Well, uh, let me tell you why I get asked, because it's really the only argument anybody can have against the kind of diet that I so strongly recommend. You can't, you can't argue that it's protein deficient, amino acid deficient, calcium deficient, or any other deficiencies, but you can't say B12. Well, we deal with that, you know, to avoid the one in a million chance of developing a disease caused by B12 deficiency. It's like one in a million. You can develop biochemical changes uh, much more frequently, of course, but in terms of real disease, one in a million. But we don't want anybody to have any problems following the McDougal diet. And so I've always recommended a B12 supplement. You just need a tiny bit, much, much smaller amounts than you can buy in the health food store or the grocery store. Uh, usually they recommend uh, doses of 500 to 5,000 micrograms. You need about 0.5 micrograms a day at most. Now we recommend five micrograms of B12 a day, but you're still taking in 100, 1,000 times more B12 than you need. Fortunately, fortunately, I don't think it's toxic, but I could be wrong. I mean, there have been some recent studies on B12 associated with increased risk of lung cancer. I can't understand why, and so I'm not gonna to react to it too strongly. But let's just say like taking any supplement, any medication, your positive effects and negative effects. But so far I feel like the positive effects way outweigh the negative effects on taking B12. At the very least, you won't get any criticism about being on the healthiest diet on the planet. So as far as what kind of supplement you should take, uh, I've got a couple of papers. Well, first of all, I started out recommending that you take ba basically any kind of B12. And there are several forms. There's uh, cobalamin is the basic uh, molecule, cobalamin. There's a methyl, a hydroxy, and a cyano form of cobalamin. So originally I started out just recommending just any old kind of cobalamin supplement. But the paper came out that said that that uh, eating the cyano form was not particularly good for you. It didn't resolve in the neurologic benefits that we were looking for. And so I said, okay, well, I'll recommend the methyl and hydroxy. One paper, what paper said this? But anyway, I, I felt it was worth moving on that and told people to pick the methyl and hydroxy form. And then I got uh, another paper, the second paper. And really, I only have two papers that have, uh, have uh, opposite recommendations. And they say that you really need the cyanal form for the, for the nervous system. And it's really important and uh, that the methyl hydroxy isn't gonna do it. 
Well, you know, right now, I don't blame you for being confused because the science is confusing. It's confused because it really hasn't come down to proper studies to determine which is best. So what uh, I've recommended is that when you take B12, that you take a couple of different forms. Uh, in our home, we have the methyl, the hydroxy, and the cyanoforms, all three. And so uh, whatever I think about it, you know, how often do you have to take B12? Well, I told you five micrograms a day is plenty. Well, you can also take it weekly or monthly. I take it when I remember it. And I would guess that's on the uh, uh, every, every few monthly areas. So uh, what I do is I take all three forms. And, uh, but you could consume a different form every week. That'd be one way to do it. Or you just take all three forms at one time. That's to be on the extreme safe side. But again, your risk of B12 deficiency is extremely small. Even if you can't absorb B12, it takes two to three years to run out of your stores. If you have this efficient circulation uh, where, where the B12 is utilized over and over again by the gastrointestinal tract, then it takes you 20 to 30 years to run out of B12. So, you know, I, I wouldn't put, put a lot of effort into it, but we sincerely do recommend, it. And as I told you, we, you know, Mary and I take it, that you take a B12 supplement, you're going to be strictly on our program for more than three years, or you're pregnant or nursing a baby. That pretty much covers it all. I'm Dr. John McDougall. I hope that helped you understand a little bit of the confusion out there on B12. So, I hope that was clear for you, too. It certainly was for me. And it's important to take a little bit of vitamin B12 if you're whole food plant-based and have no animal products in your world. Yeah, I thought it was interesting how he said, it's like one in a million chance that if you don't take a supplement and you're whole food plant-based, it's one in a million you, you'd have a problem because it does come from other sources and we actually do make some in our own gut, but why take the chance? Uh, what was really interesting uh, was just how much we need, 0.5 milligram, micrograms per day. Yeah. So he recommends taking five, that's like a tenfold more than the research shows our body utilizes. So there's plenty there. And it's good to have plenty there so that we can build up the store. We store vitamin B12 in our livers. So that's what he said too. Wasn't it interesting how if you've got a full tank, so to speak, you got plenty of B12 there in your liver, it would take years and years to deplete it. So it's, it's maybe not the big scare thing that a lot of people have. Oh, you're vegan. What about B12? You're going to get sick. Um, Probably won't get sick, but let's play it safe. Five not micrograms a day. Yeah. yeah. Now, recipe. Well, mm -hmm. this was a shocker because I've never made Mexican potato salad before. And I wasn't sure it would be good. And it's really good. We served it on a big bed of farm lettuce. So mm -hmm. yummy. And that made it a whole dish, meaning a whole meal's full. So give it a try. It's really tasty. We have some left over, so I'm going to put it on our salad tonight as part of our dinner. Yeah, it's really delicious. Mexican, well, it's my favorite. And I think Connie's pretty prone to it as well. Oh, I love it. So, yeah, yeah it was a real fun um, experiment. And... So like Connie said, we did it as a whole meal by putting it on a bed of lettuce. Because we always want to have those dark leafy greens as part of a whole meal. So there it is all in one dish. And then um, you can have it just as a side dish as well. We did put some sriracha on top. Uh, you can put sriracha or a little salsa just to kind of peak it up and give it a little more of that Mexican trend, yeah. if you like. Delicious. Thanks for joining us.